to thank all of you to be part of this uh, group. And in the Wildlife Week celebration uh, uh, topic, a uh, very topics have been covered. But the topic which has been given to me is slightly, in some ways, slightly detached from the actual wildlife uh, related matter. Uh, it happens to be a special program which funded all activities in the district. And I'll, what I will do is I'll just trace uh, uh, how HADP evolved and what it did in the district and what shape it has taken up now. And uh, forestry is one of the sectors which is funded under uh, this program. And uh, along with soil conservation and horticulture, these three main sectors were funded under HADP. And this contributed to the uh, main objectives, as was mentioned in the introduction, of eco restoration, eco development, and eco preservation, while taking into consideration the socio economic needs of the people residing in the biosphere. So it took up took the biosphere approach, where not just the plants and animals are of importance, but also the uh, uh, the biotic component, that is the human resource which is available in the area. So it took a holistic uh, view of uh, developing the entire area while preserving the natural and uh, fragile ecosystem. So uh, as it was mentioned in the introduction, uh, HADP is, was introduced uh, as a program by the Union Planning Commission at that time in 1975 under a special central assistance program. Now special central assistance of Union Planning Commission at that time covered not just hill area development program, it had 13 other programs uh, tackling and uh, uh, trying to address areas which were of concern, like Western Ghat development program was also part of that, desertification uh, restoration areas, so coastal areas. So this type of other areas were also covered under this program. So this was started in the year 1975, uh, to handle a specific uh, problem area. Now, uh, this program uh, initially, it uh, I'm, I'm now uh, telling entirely about the Hill Area Development Program. Hill Area Development Program, uh, when it started in 1975, it was introduced in two districts of Assam, that is uh, Karbi Anglong and uh, North Kachar Hills, and eight districts of erstwhile UP which became Uttarakhand, and then uh, Nilgiri district in the south. So these were the areas covered under this uh, program. When uh, uh, Uttarakhand state was formed, it, be, uh, it started getting the funding under the regular uh, annual allocation, which used to come from the Union Planning Commission. So it got separated, and the program then got concentrated and focused into Assam, that is Karbi Anglong and North Kachar Hills, and Nilgiri district in the south. Now, the reason for choosing Nilgiris was, one, uh, the uh, district was almost entirely hilly with uh, a very fragile ecosystem in the sense that it had, uh, it was part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, but it had endemic forms, so which was one of the important criteria. The other important criteria was the entire area was uh, uh, landslide prone large chunks of area at least. Now this required a specific treatment, so this area was chosen. And the other important uh, aspect which was considered while choosing this district was all the, uh, the tribal population is high in this district and all of them constitute the six PTGs as they're called, primitive tribal groups, uh, Todas, but, uh, Todas, uh, Kurumbas, uh, Paniyas, uh, uh, Kothas, Kartanaikars, Irulas, and Kurum, uh, Kurumbas, yeah, six of them. So these uh, six uh, PTGs uh, of Tamil Nadu all find representation in uh, this district. So the fragile ecosystem, the Shola grassland uh, particularly, as well as the uh, nature of the uh, terrain, highly prone to landslips, and uh, high concentration of primitive tribal groups. So these uh, were the criteria which was taken for choosing this district as uh, one of the uh, beneficiaries under the Hill Area Development Program. Now, the uh, Planning Commission for all its programs had the watershed approach. 
so the entire area of the district was demarcated into 75 major uh, uh, the what do you call as a major watersheds 75 major watersheds were delineated in the district of which 37 were called priority and 38 were called non priority uh, this priority came uh, uh, from the instance of the uh, vulnerability to landslips and uh, other biotic pressures so the 38 non priority districts happened to be the ones which were highly forested so they were uh, less um, uh, prone to landslips and other uh, issues of uh, uh, ecological uh, the geological problems so 37 were called the priority watersheds and 38 were the non priority watersheds now within these for treatment uh, micro watersheds were delineated each of an area of 350 to 500 hectares and all operations were undertaken in these and the funding mechanism was 90 percent of the money would come from the union planning commission and state share would be 10 percent uh, this is how the project came into uh, thing and within the allocation the annual plans were supposed to be prepared for each of these areas these three places like I said, two districts of uh, Assam and uh, one district in Tamil Nadu. They had to prepare an annual plan after consulting the local so that uh, the bottoms up approach was uh, undertaken, built needs were assessed, and then various sectors, sectoral requirements were uh, arrived at and consolidated into an annual plan, which used to go to the Union Planning Commission for approval. In that, there was another condition uh, which uh, said that 60% of the budgetary allocation should go to the priority sectors and uh, priority watersheds and 40% to the non-priority watershed. And uh, the focus of the whole program was that forestry, soil conservation and horticulture would get the primary uh, focus and the larger chunk of budgetary allocation went to these sectors. Uh, with this, uh, the variety of uh, programs were developed right from 1975 to 2014-15. Uh, this program uh, started impl was implemented, and uh, the uh, good part of this program was it is one of the success programs, if we see in a way, uh, by uh, the sense that the all-encompassing, you know, all the sectors were uh, uh, benefited uh, from this funding. The only negative part was the minute uh, what happens in a state uh, government's funding is the minute central funding starts flowing into a particular sector, the state slowly reduces its share of uh, the allocation. And another important part of uh, the uh, program was that it was not supposed to fund the main activities. It was supposed to be a supplemental activity that to a regular budget of a particular um, uh, sector, it would supplement programs or supplement uh, uh, certain innovative ideas and uh, uh, concepts and works, which could not be undertaken as a regular part of the program. So it was supposed to be a supplemental thing. But over a period of time, gradually state started withdrawing the funding from all other sectors. And solely the funding used to be focused only from the hill area development program. That is why any of you who had uh, visited uh, Nilgiris would see the HADP board ubiquitous all over the district. So all the sectors were funded under this. They were in all about 13 to 14 sectors which were funded. And uh, like I said, the forestry, soil conservation and uh, horticulture were given the primacy. Along with that, the development of urban and rural local bodies and other sectors got the next level of priority. So uh, several works were undertaken. And uh, particularly if I now come to basic sectors, in the forestry sector, uh, Nilgiri has 56% uh, of area under forest. So it is a large forest cover uh, here. Plus it is part of uh, Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. And you are aware of the PAs which are available here, Madhumalai Tiger Reserve as well as Mukurti National Park each with a distinct uh, uh, type of uh, uh, having distinct forest types, particularly the Shola grassland ecosystem of Mukurti National Park with the endemic uh, species, thar, 
and uh, other species. O almost all the floral and faunal forms are represented in the district within fairly large numbers, uh, being part of the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Under forestry sector, the main funding uh, would be, uh, if we just take, it was focused as habitat uh, improvement and uh, component, under which uh, largely in the past, the funding was mainly for shola grassland uh, restoration, uh, regeneration of sholas, and uh, removal of alien invasive species. So this was the main focus as part of the habitat improvement works. Then another major chunk which got funding under Hill Area Development Program was for forest protection. This became a very, very important component for all the divisions which were available here, as well as for Mudumalai Tiger Reserve. All the anti-poaching watchers, their wages, engaging for fire protection activities, fire protection works, all these were funded under this program. And another important component was uh, ecotourism, which also included conducting nature camps. This was a slightly smaller component. And uh, lastly, the man-animal conflict issues, which were fairly uh, widespread, in particularly in the Goodlur region. So it required a lot of assistance of uh, anti-depredation squads, engaging people to keep ward off the animals from entering into habitation areas, and also undertake rescue and rehabilitation of the animals which strayed out into the uh, uh, human domain. So these were the activities which were funded under the forestry sector. And there were also, as part of habitat improvement, a lot of soil conservation uh, measures were undertaken, which had a dual purpose. One, they uh, improved the water holding capacity and the water storage, uh, water availability in the forested areas. At the same time, it also met the uh, uh, wildlife uh, needs during the pinch period, that is the summers. So these were largely the sec uh, areas which were funded under the forestry sector. Now, as it, the activities were undertaken in a uh, holistic manner, so the treatment of any watershed would start at the top, which were the forested areas, and then the uh, soil and the water which is conserved there gradually trickles down to the areas which are under cultivation. And these areas were tackled by the Agriculture Engineering Department. So a lot of uh, soil moisture conservation measures were undertaken. Also, a lot of uh, land uh, development works were undertaken, terracing the lands, because large areas in Nilgiris is under vegetable cultivation. There's no agriculture department here. Uh, it is a horticulture department, which undertakes all the activities of even the agriculture department of other districts. And uh, uh, these activities were undertaken of, uh, in tandem with the forestry activity. And uh, then came the horticulture department. Once lands were developed, uh, horticulture uh, was given the primacy. Uh, all the uh, varieties which are grown, a lot of uh, coal crops are grown here. So uh, supply of seeds, implements, subsidy for uh, uh, planting these materials, all these were funded under uh, Hill Area Development Program. Now, these were the three main sectors. Besides these, uh, the other sectors which got funding was uh, for the uh, tribal population and for the weaker sections, the primacy was given and a lot of activities were undertaken, particularly in the uh, government tribal residential schools. A uh, lot of uh, asset uh, creation took place there. Even tribal habitations, the house construction to all the basic amenities, providing drinking water, providing approach roads, providing drainage and all the other amenities were also undertaken under Hill Area Development Program as part under welfare of SCST as well as in the social welfare sector. Then uh, road and road safety sector was another important sector and tourism, energy conservation, human resource development, medical and uh, 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 the animal husbandry and uh, uh, dairy development. So these were the primary sectors and small funding also went to sericulture to propagate uh, uh, particularly the bivoltine uh, type of uh, sericulture rearing, which is suitable to this particular area. But uh, it really didn't take off that much because uh, a lot of farmers were not willing to switch to uh, mulberry crop and to rear uh, sericulture.
So uh, there are a lot of uh, positives in the program. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, it became the flagship program of, in the district undertaken uh, by its sheer presence. So the annual funding would uh, range in the order of uh, 40 to 45 crores per year. So this is the type of uh, uh, um, uh, financial assistance which was pumped into the district. Uh, so a lot of assets, important assets were created uh, under this. And this program uh, went fairly successful. It had a project mode, so it was much easy for all the sectoral agencies to submit proposals, which would get processed in the HADP cell, HADP unit, which was uh, in UTI. And uh, through the planning and development department, it would go to planning commission, get approval, and uh, the fund flow was also immediate. Uh, things went smooth. But in, uh, with the winding up of the Union Planning Commission, uh, suddenly the funding stopped. So for one year, the uh, program was run by using the interest amount which uh, accrued and was available in the banks. So with that, uh, the uh, activity was undertaken. And then in the year 15-16, it took a different shape. It became the Special Area Development Program. Now it has become a state program. Uh, uh, program and uh, this is uh, done by combining the erstwhile Western Ghat development program which was being uh, run in eight districts of the state along with HADP. Now in combined uh, with this, uh, now this program has been uh, modified as a special area development program. It has got uh, two units, one unit uh, since the uh, whole uh, statewide uh, jurisdiction, almost eight districts plus uh, 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 Nilgiris, nine districts were uh, got additional funding in that. So it has now become uh, as part of the uh, State Planning Commission uh, is the main unit which controls the uh, whole funding process. And uh, there is a project director still of SADP in UTI, but with the limited jurisdiction of Nilgiris, Erode and Coimbatore districts. And the remaining uh, uh, districts, uh, eight districts are covered under by the uh, land use planning uh, division of the uh, uh, state planning commission from Chennai. But in this whole uh, uh, exercise, when it became a special area development program, the eastern Ghats and coastal areas are still not covered in this. So it covers only the western Ghat aspects of it. So a lot of valuable assets have been created. And a uh, lot of, uh, like if you have visited uh, Nadugani's gene pool garden, Gene pool came into existence because of uh, HADP, and a uh, lot of uh, orchidariums have come up uh, in that as, as part of uh, biodiversity conservation initiatives. And uh, the Shola regeneration program has not been very successful. Let me be slightly upfront about the failures too. Uh, though a lot of attempts were made to uh, regenerate Sholas, but it had pockets of success. There are only few places where they succeeded, largely uh, the impact is not that felt. But the uh, way Sholas were fenced and protected, that uh, gave uh, some higher degree of uh, protection to the existing Sholas. And uh, from the alternates uh, which were found to uh, for the fuel wood needs uh, from 75 to say 85 or till 90, that ensured that uh, the Sholas were not hacked for fuel wood. So some degree of uh, protection came to them. But there is still a long way to go. There are a lot of uh, grassland areas which need to be restored. So that is now uh, part of it is being funded under SADP. And uh, part of it is being taken as a special project to clear the uh, wattle and blue gum plantations and restore sholas and grasslands. It would be largely grasslands which would be restored. Sholas are, were there in very few pockets. So those pockets would be uh, restored into that. So this is how the whole uh, program uh, took a shape. And uh, I just gave a, a broad outline is to just make you aware that uh, an important program like this came into this district. Other uh, important part with the Nilgiris is Nilgiris doesn't have any mining activity. So the geology and mines department was wound up here in 2012. So right from 2012 onwards, there is a total ban on uh, uh, green felling and there is a total ban on uh, mining. 
so there is no mining activity in the district. So a part of the ecological uh, preservation activities is undertaken immediately by this action. That, it, and it, that was because of the recommendation from the uh, HDP at that point of time. There was a, a geo tech cell. This uh, cell uh, assessed all the areas and found very high vulnerability to landslides and recommended to the government to stop all kind of mining and other activities. And entire thing was wound up. And uh, geology and mines department doesn't exist in Nilgiri district. And uh, this has given a good fillip that uh, this area generally has a better conservation. Uh, the issues now are largely because of unplanned development. There are a lot of uh, roads which have been formed and large habitations have come up in very, very fragile ecosystems, uh, which are very, very prone to landslips during these uh, cloud bursts and heavy rainfall. That is a, a cause of concern. And whenever scars have, uh, are detected or uh, all the older areas which had landslides, those areas treatment was undertaken by the agriculture engineering department over several decades. So large uh, areas of scars have been treated, but the balance areas too are heavily prone to landslips, as you have uh, seen in Iduki and all the other areas. So a similar situation exists here with the erratic rainfall that we are having now because of climate change issues. Uh, we will be having issues of uh, cloud bursts in the future too. Uh, so we have to be extremely cautious and vigilant to ensure that uh, the landslip areas are restored and areas are protected from a major landslip. So uh, a lot of work is being done in that. So along with the Hill Area Development Program, the other programs which uh, the acts which are there, the Hill Area Preservation Act, so that uh, there is a lot of restriction on the type of uh, uh, structures which can come up in the district and the uh, trees which can be felled here. So there is a, a streamlined process of uh, that under which uh, uh, that basic uh, protection is being accorded. So uh, HADP has definitely been a quite a successful program. I would uh, rate it in, in a scale of one to 10, somewhere around seven. So uh, uh, this program, uh, that's the only reason why it survived uh, despite uh, the Union Planning Commission being wound up. And the State Planning Commission recommended that uh, this program is essentially needed. And in fact, it needs a greater fill up to, to uh, make its impact. And uh, the best way to highlight the program is that you go to any nook and corner, everybody knows uh, HADP. The program is known all over the district. People are aware that what are the type of activities which can be undertaken in this. In the past, there has also been one small problem that largely people would come asking for retaining walls to all the habitations. So Union Planning Commission then gave a clear instruction that uh, retaining walls, that uh, uh, item would not be permitted under the program. So uh, a lot of uh, areas which required uh, uh, protection uh, was then covered under other programs, but not under Hill Area Development Program. Otherwise, it was slowly degenerating into a program in which only retaining walls were being sought. So now the program had a variety of components spread over the entire uh, length and breadth of the district, covering a variety of uh, activities. And uh, it has definitely contributed to the preserving of the ecology of this particular district. So um, with that, I just uh, conclude my small talk. I'm open to discussion and open to queries from the members. Uh, uh, very, very uh, good, sir. Like, thank you, sir. Basically, like uh, we, even though it's a wildlife week, like we thought of asking uh, or talking about this uh, uh, the HADP because uh, one example, I, I think like that's one example, right? A ecologically fragile area, like a, with the 65 percentage of the forest is being, uh, I mean, preserved by empowering the local people and uh, right, right, giving them livelihood. I think like also we we had like earlier talks on the socio-economic aspects and yesterday and yesterday we had talked uh, with the ssr all those like emphasis like you know uh, the conservation will happen only if the local community or the stakeholders are at the world so so i think like that is the most important thing like why we wanted to know about this uh program so so not just the hlb program 
for them. So we would like to know more about the, the wildlife in the uh, wildlife or the national park or the or the uh, or other like forest areas in the in the Middle East too. So we'll ask you uh, some questions on that too. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, people are uh, encouraged to ask questions either inside the in the chat box or they can one by one can unmute and uh, ask questions. Can I just uh, comment and also ask? You know, I'm Isa, Mr. Reddy. Yes. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, because you know, uh, SADP, now you have uh, the national parks and I mean, the tiger reserves and uh, uh, the Mukurti National Park and everything also within the Nilgiris. How do you coordinate all these activities to see that there are no contradictions? Because you know, this happens in several places. You know that you know, uh, between territorial and uh, uh, sanctuaries and national parks, there are uh, problems, you know, contradictions are there. So how do you avoid these contradictions? in if at all it is there how do you coordinate that so sadp has some control also or some kind of uh, coordination with the uh, uh, pa management um, uh, good evening dr risa uh, so <laughs> nice to see you on the uh, in this discussion now uh, let me I, there's one part which i missed out in while uh, talking in that the role of uh, the project director of uh, erstwhile HADP and now the present uh, SADP is only of coordination. Uh, there is absolutely no uh, interference or uh, uh, into the activities of each sector because each department has, is governed by its own sets of rules and regulations. So what they do is in consonance to all the rules and regulations which are existing in that sector, they submit proposals. Because, uh, like you are very much aware, that any proposal coming from Tiger Reserve should have been a part of the uh, Tiger Plan, Tiger Conservation Plan. So only those components can be undertaken there. So they have to mention that uh, uh, Tiger Conservation Plan and then submit those proposals. So the role of the uh, this is merely a funding agency, which doesn't execute any work. It merely gives the funding to the uh, concerned sectoral uh, departments and they undertake the works as per the rules and regulations of that department. So uh, there is no uh, direct uh, uh, conflict of any sort. But what the uh, project director uh, normally uh, is supposed to do is they're supposed to also keep the larger picture in mind that what is the uh, reason for which that particular component is being funded. Now, when, whenever any of these uh, sectoral department gives a proposal, it is analyzed in detail, telling that why is it being sought under HADP or uh, the present SADP. So if, if it is not matching to the basic objectives, then uh, SADP simply refuses to include it into the annual plan. So they have to actually justify why they want to include a certain component. Now, that is regarding the funding. So the sectoral need uh, is always matched with the existing rules and regulations. So nothing in violation of that can be permitted. Hello. Yes. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my name is, my name is Madhu and I'm calling from Gujarat. Ha, good evening. Uh, and uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You have provided a lot of inputs. Like, sir, uh, I, I am born and brought up in Uti. So yes. one thing like uh, what I observed in Uti, uh, I studied in Arvangadu, sir. Arvangadu. So what I observed is that when in my times when we were in schooling, we had no water scarcity. Now in Uti, uh, water scarcity is the biggest problem, you know. When I went last time, you know, we 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 stayed in the same place where we we are born and brought up. So hardly we we get water to take bath and all those things. So it, we are finding it very difficult over these past years. Uh, I am not sure what has happened, but then a lot of water scarcity in Nilgiris. That is there. So the uh, what you are mentioning is the larger uh, story, uh, which is yeah. true for not only for Nilgiris, but all the major hill stations which are uh, developing beyond their uh, carrying capacity. Large number of resorts and houses are coming up. I incidentally, yeah. uh, it's a very peculiar statistic about the district. Uh, if you take the 2001 to 2011 census, 
this is the only district which has recorded a decadal reduction in population. This is the only district in the country which has recorded a, a reduction in population. But the alarming statistic was the number of houses have increased. That means ah, a lot of people correct. have purchased lands and constructed houses in which they come and stay for a short period, maybe short period in summers time. or correct. in other times. So yes. uh, the number of households have been gone up. And as with the increase in population, you are very well aware that uh, the water uh, need also goes up. This is one aspect. Secondly, uh, there is also an issue of uh, long-term hydrological uh, uh, status of uh, land. In not only okay. here, that applies to any district in the country or anywhere in the world. The way we are extracting the groundwater and we are extracting even the surface water uh, utilization for crops, for uh, the household uh, consumption, that has definitely increased. And uh, the sources are just the same. So when the ut utilization has increased, obviously we will feel the shortage. So, and we, I'm living here for almost uh, now uh, nine years and okay. uh, I see the difference. Uh, last year, uh, Kunur had a water supply once in uh, 20 days, which is yeah. uh, for most of you are from Kerala, which is uh, very unheard of. Yeah, surprise 20 me, days surprise so we had to store the water and use it very, very judiciously. And this problem will will continue to be compounded unless there is a some kind of a freeze either on further development of uh, homesteads and households or commercial activities unless that there's a curb on that the water availability uh, the water uh, potential is limited whereas the usage has shot up sir the uh, low lying here is one more question i wanted to ask sir actually i am doing my uh, phd with uh, this uh, uh, conservation biology only so I'm doing on this Prosophis juliflora. Okay. So uh, is there any invasion in Neil Greece with the Prosophis juliflora? Yes, there is. Prosophis juliflora uh, uh, problem is available only in a localized pocket uh, in uh, near Tengu Marada, that is bordering uh, Eero district on the banks okay. of Moyar. And there is already okay. a, pro a project on f for uh, approval of the entire uh, Prosophis. So is, here, is, there, is there only one method yeah. to approve it? Uh, you don't have any biological method to control over this growth? Uh, that is part of the uh, Tiger Reserve. So uh, we cannot use any chemical. We cannot use any uh, biological agent which is not native. So okay. the, that constraint is there of uh, things. So it has to be only a mechanical removal. Mechanical of, uh, uprooting only is possible. Mechanical uprooting is the only method available in that particular area because it's yeah. part of the uh, eco the tiger. Reserve. Because sir, what I, what I have seen, sir, I belong to Kutch here. So I have seen here, here they fully it is covered with the prosovis only. But then I have observed that wherever there are pockets of this acacia leucophilia, uh, the uh, prosovis does not uh, cover up that area. You know, mm -hmm. There is some, what you call uh, some... Some sort of chemical that in the yes. soil uh, or uh, what you call uh, it must be having some impact that it doesn't allow the growth. Possibly. So that's what I was asking whether you but, observe uh, all this. Acacia leucophloa is not native in that region in uh, Tengamarada to that uh, Sigur area. So we only okay, it is have. There in the, uh, Dharmaburi and all that is there, I think. Dharmaburi, uh, Dharmaburi it is there. It is there even yeah. beyond in Eero district also, but not in this okay. area. In this area, okay. the uh, predominant species is uh, Carissa carandis. And you have okay. uh, the other uh, species, but uh, Prosophis is the uh, invasive, alien invasive species, which started spreading rapidly. So uh, it is uh, in a pocket of area uh, uh, on both sides of the Moyar River in that particular area. Otherwise, As such, in Greece, have, it is not affected, otherwise no? we don't have uh, Prosophis in remaining areas of Nilgiris. Oh, okay, okay. There we have other weeds which are of problem. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the question. So my name so is Dev Shaji. I am a journalist with Moga Bay India. And uh, it is very happy to know that there is no mining activities happening in the Nilgiris. And it is because of the recommendations of HDP. And uh, when it when it came into being, and what are the results, any opposition, any problem you are facing at the local level in terms of getting the construction material or getting the granite for other things? Uh, it it uh, came uh, 31st March 2012 the uh, geology and mines department was wound up here in 2012. Uh, initially, yes, there was definitely a bit of opposition, but uh, it was overruled and done. And uh, there's not much of mining in any case here. There was a lot of sand removal which was happening, but definitely there wasn't much of 
granite removal because most of it would come either in the forested area or uh, in uh, certain pockets where even otherwise under law we could not remove because it would uh, attract uh, a private forest act and it would also attract uh, hill area preservation of trees act so uh, considering all this uh, the mining was in even uh, before that uh, quite restricted so it was totally stopped definitely uh, there is a bit of impact uh, the construction costs have shot up the construction is difficult the sand has to come all the way from karur now since uh, the uh, removal of sand there also is uh, stopped so they are dependent only on m sand the granite comes uh, mostly uh, from metropolitan area Uh, or adjoining areas of e road and uh, some quantity comes from uh, uh, karnataka gundul pete ji being a uh, fragile area uh, do you think uh, do you have any regulation on the use of chemicals in or in the form of fertilizer or anything in the cultivation Uh, uh legally there wasn't any uh, restriction because uh, it cannot legally be enforced but this uh, district is gradually turning towards for the last one and a half years there is a, a campaign on to convert the areas into organic so there is a huge push from the horticulture department uh, uh, supported by the district administration the collector is very very proactive uh, towards uh, converting areas into organic so uh, the organic clusters are being encouraged so gradually uh, it is a move towards that legally it cannot be enforced sir good evening sir sharavanan from selam sir uh, i just wanted to add one more point as number there was a thing about this prosophis juliflora i think uh, the control of prosophis juliflora is very because uh, seed dispersal is very high and uh, that is one of the reason that we are unable to get into the controls a lot of people working on prosophis juliflora are not looking into this aspect because even as you mentioned that in that tengmada uh, area also a lot of uh, um, monkeys also macaques also they now uh, uh, feed on uh, this and it multiplies very much and it is a, a great Issues, sir. That's what I wanted to mention. Uh, not just the bonnet macaque. Okay. Uh, we also have the black buck, which is feeding on the prosopis yeah. pods. Yeah, yeah, all, all, sir. All, all, sir. Even so, elephants also they take it, sir. Even elephants. As a first so, measure, the approval of the existing stock is uh, uh, proposed, and then subsequently for next four or five years, we need to go on approving all the new generation which comes up. It will yes, be sir. a long haul. It will not be done in one go. It will not be possible. even after uprooting i think sir the pods had to be segregated or it has to be kept away so that it doesn't uh, be carried away because after uprooting most of the places where i have seen after uprooting in uh, urban areas and the rural areas they always the cattle uh, they keep uh, the boats and all these things they keep doing it and it multiplies in the multiples of this Definitely, the seed load will be an issue even after approval. The uh, seed load has to be extinguished. It will take a couple of years. Uh, definitely, more than four to five years to eradicate it to a large extent. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I think uh, uh, another interesting factor or interesting information which we can provide is the. that you know we cannot think of uh, nilgiris without eucalyptus in the in the background is there any attempt in kerala you now we are currently going for eco restoration of uh, selected areas uh, bringing it back to uh, the natural stage is there any attempt uh, being planned uh, to uh, for eco restoration programs in nilgiris uh, uh, yes uh, dr isa the extent of uh, the wattle and blue gum plantations and even red gum plantations is extensive mm. uh, in nilgiris and kodaikanal so uh, and it it is a very cost yep. uh, intensive uh, effort plus it it uh, in certain areas and uh, you also have pines so in combination pines wattle and uh, blue gum the uh, extent is huge and uh, like we have the issues with prosophis for uh, what will be also have the issue of regeneration 
So there is a huge uh, seed load which is available in the soil. Even after approval, in a matter of three years, again, the whole place uh, regenerates into a lush uh, wattle patch. So it has to be a constrained, uh, uh, consistent and uh, a prolonged uh, attempt. So that's why it cannot be done in uh, bits and pieces. So it has been included as a special project, uh, which is awaiting sanction as part of TBGB's uh, phase three, in which uh, removal of these alien invasive species is a very, very major component. And unless a large scale uh, approval is done, uh, the seed spread and uh, uh, the <coughs> Um, the, uh, the regeneration from the available root stock as well as the seed will continue. So it, it is a long haul. It is not so easy to think. And even the methodology is not yet standardized. Uh, I also understand that, you know, this area is also a part of the World Heritage Site, you know, Nilgiris. Uh, I, I don't know whether I'm correct or not, but what, what do you think is the impact of uh, having this area declared as a World Heritage Site? Uh, in practical terms, I don't think there's much of uh, impact. It. It, it just gives it uh, more of a focus. Maybe if it is declared World Heritage Site, uh, the negative impact is we have more tourists dropping in. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Neil Gris has a yeah. big, uh, big impact from the tourism, right? So, so I've seen like in the, in the Masinagudi, like all those, uh, the illegal resorts are like closed. So that is that improved the situation of wildlife, like especially elephants in, in Masinagudi? Is it still? Uh, uh, definitely after the, uh, Supreme Court's intervention, uh, the fences have all been removed. Now, if you go to any of those closed resorts, you can even in daytime see spotted deer uh, moving freely in that area. And uh, the uh, corridor's integrity maintenance is very, very essential. Otherwise, uh, that area, uh, we create bottlenecks and the elephant uh, concentration, if it happens there, it will lead to a lot of issues there. Presently, there is no issue in the Masangodi uh, area because of the free movement of uh, the uh, animals. Otherwise, you have a lot of these man-made barriers. You have a gorge on one side, and you have these uh, 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 irrigation, uh, this uh, hydroelectric uh, channels. So uh, there are a lot of physical barriers which are available. So the animals have only a restricted uh, space to move. And if we uh, have a lot of commercial activity in those areas, it will be a, a problem in the coming years. So uh, timely intervention has happened now. So that area, if further development is just stopped, so animals can now freely move. And in the COVID times, uh, there is, at least I have noticed, marked change in the behavior of the animals in Mudumala itself. And now, earlier, you would have all animals scattering, but not the spotted deer. Spotted deer would see the vehicles and still continue foraging on the edges of roads. But now there is a degree of shyness which has come in that when a vehicle comes, they tend to scramble a little bit, which is the natural behavior, and it is a good uh, sign. And the sightings have improved. The animals are freely moving. Larger congregations are seen. This is also ably supported by a good monsoon this year, and there's good uh, foraging uh, material available. So a lot of huge uh, mega congregations can be seen in Mudumale at the moment. Uh, so, uh, sir, I'm Anita from Kerala. Hello. Yes. Uh, I'm, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Uh, uh, like, uh, it's a good sign. Like you say, COVID times have brought a greater freedom for the animals. Uh, There's a little bit of echo coming. Uh, There's a little bit of echo. Okay. I don't know what I can do about it. Uh, now you're clear. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to get your question. The voice, voice is breaking. If you could just type the thing, uh, maybe I'll just answer it. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. You can type here in the question box. I'll do that, I'll do that. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Rajiv of a uh, total different field. 
so you have talked about different uh, sectors that are involved in HADP. Uh, so is this all under the control of uh, uh, the government, uh, uh, the district collector, or someone uh, else? Uh, it, it is uh, when it was in HADP, it was uh, separated from the district administration. It came into a project mode. And the PD project director Hilly Development mm. Program reported directly to the principal secretary planning and development. It was a uh, part of the planning mm. and development department. We would, as part of the district administration's uh, thing, we would always consider the proposals and which were received from the collector. But collector had no direct role in the uh, HADP. It was only between uh, the sectors and uh, PD HADP would conduct an independent review sometimes with the help of collector too otherwise uh, this entity was uh, totally detached from the district administration's direct uh, control it came directly under the pnd uh, department and then uh, uh, the proposals would be accepted and sent to union planning commission and come back but now when it became a state scheme now it is rooted through the collector at the moment uh, the pdhadp's proposal has to be approved by the uh, district collector there is a separate cell which is created in the collectorate, which processes, and the collector has to approve it and then submit it to state government, or, or rather the uh, state planning commission. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, is there any recommendation for uh, construction of some industry source like buildings, which are uh, matching with that uh, green buildings, like uh, green buildings, uh, like uh, recommendation for buildings? Uh, like I said, uh, HADP uh, Sumoto doesn't do anything. Uh, uh, when the proposals come from the various sectors, it is undertaken. Uh, green building, uh, like particularly the uh, rammed earth uh, structures, were uh, tried out in uh, botanical garden as a, a path. So mm -hmm. I do not know what is the condition now, uh, but it was tried out there. And uh, also rammed earth structures were also uh, suggested, but uh, none came forward uh, to undertake that. Okay. So could you play, is, uh, explain something about the disaster management and mitigation uh, process uh, that can? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. in, in the area, like I said, there was one uh, uh, cell, uh, geotech cell, which was funded under HADP. Uh, mm -hmm. It was from the geology, uh, mines and geology department, that unit was functioning here. Mm -hmm. They undertook survey of all the areas uh, by uh, studying the geology of various slopes. And mm -hmm. they came up with recommendations of areas which were prone to okay. landslips Landslip. by grading it. That okay. high degree of proneness to less degree of proneness. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, based on that, that recommendation was very vital in funding for uh, the landslide mitigation measures. Okay. So these were of two types. One was pre and uh, one was after the landslip happened. That is, once a okay. landslip happened in certain area, the scar which was created was treated. Treated. Okay. And uh, prior to that, the areas which were prone, the uh, areas were uh, by making some drainage lines to uh, reduce the water load. I'm sure you're aware that uh, particularly the geology of uh, Nilgiris is so peculiar that when there is a cloud burst, the upper portion, the there's a water logging which happens. Mm -hmm. And that adds to the weight of the soil and then the slip occurs. Okay. Which is true in all the areas. Uh, uh, even uh, I am residing in Trishur in Kerala. So uh, all last the areas, year, uh, the problem yeah, we is the same. So we had... uh, attempts, attempts were then made to uh, reduce the uh, water load in that uh, areas by mm -hmm. uh, creating drainage lines so that uh, the water saturation would not occur, super saturation, which mm -hmm. would increase uh, the weight load uh, for the landslip to happen. So a lot of uh, things were tried and also a lot of uh, stream training uh, activities were undertaken on Chaliar, Vaitari, is, uh, the lot of tributaries which are there in Goodloor area. So mm -hmm. uh, stream training activities so that the water is channelized and doesn't flood the sites. A lot of Gabioni works were undertaken on the uh, primary, secondary and tertiary uh, streams. Mm -hmm. And also small to large check dams were constructed on uh, depending on the suitability of the stream. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sir, uh, Anita, Sir, Anita Madam had a question. So her question is, uh, she wanted to know about the initiatives taken to ensure local and tribal people's uh, involvement in the uh, area. So uh, the uh, tribal's uh, activities are uh, manifold in the district. So all the anti-poaching watchers 
largely they are from the tribal community they have been recruited as anti poaching watchers also the fire protection watchers anti depredation watchers all of them are from the tribal community who are aware of the wildlife who are aware of the uh, animal behavior and as well as the uh, uh, humans uh, activities so that is being fairly successful because they are so well aware of the animal behavior that their support has been uh, of great assistance and of, of great value in ensuring that the man animal conflict is minimized uh, this supported with uh, technology that uh, now there is sms alert uh, system there is also a patrolling uh, arrangement uh, from the department uh, for whenever animals are uh, particularly elephants are noticed in uh, certain estates the labor there and all the nearby estates are warned of the presence of these uh, animals so that they don't uh, venture out uh, at odd times and uh, subject themselves to some kind of a danger so a lot of uh, human casualties particularly in the last 3 uh, years has come down but there is still some damage which is happening to the homesteads uh, shops where some uh, ration items are stored and where elephants tend to come and damage the window break down the doors walls to extract this material so uh, their effort is there to just um, uh, push the animals uh, towards the forested areas so that uh, in that their role again is of the uh, anti poaching watchers and the anti depredation watchers and in mudumalai particularly uh, that huge uh, anti poaching uh, camp activity is there there is very good protection measure i would rate it as one of the best in the country that with the elephant camp these two activities are the highlights of madumalai the protection measure is so extensive that uh, the areas are thoroughly combed the areas are uh, patrolled uh, systematically so the major poaching instances have all been uh, highly reduced uh, some activity still happens in the interface area but uh, like the uh, operations which used to happen earlier poachers used to venture deep into madumalai such a thing doesn't happen anymore and uh, uh, it's mostly in the fringe uh, portions and this uh, combined with the elephant camp activities the uh, elephant camp uh, is very very useful it has a large number of kumki elephants which are again put to use to uh, drive away uh, the wild elephants which are uh, of some concern in certain pockets hello okay sir i i have a different okay go ahead da. go ahead da. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, one, uh, sir. I just wanted to ask, sir. Is there any success story that you can tell about, like uh, in terms of numbers uh, of uh, preservation of endangered species in Nilgiri Bio Reserve? Uh, no, that uh, that kind of uh, inventorization is not done uh, per se. It's only a large scale area which has been restored and protected. So we presume and hope that all the species which are residing in that particular area have been taken care of. so uh, there has not been much of uh, the uh, studies on uh, uh, specifics of uh, what is the uh, extent of uh, you know uh, improvement in the biodiversity and uh, thing for uh, select uh, species it has been done but not on a holistic basis right thank you sir thank you sir i have one question so yes. as you i mean this is a different question basically as you are a director of uh, tanti so what are the measures taken at least in the government uh, tea plantations to help the movement or the life of uh, wildlife uh, especially elephants or uh, goats uh, tanti we have uh, uh, areas in both uh, gudlur kunur kotigiri and in valpare Uh, but we have this issues of uh, uh, our workers uh, being subjected to uh, you know approach and contact with uh, wildlife in mostly in gudlur area as well as in valpara area in both these areas we have identified the tracks of uh, plantations where it was difficult for the workers to approach particularly on foggy days and during monsoons where uh, the mist would cover and these were abetting the uh, dense patches of forest and animals would come out and uh, the workers were subjected to a variety of uh, issues we had few casualties too so what we have done is we have identified the strips of uh, uh, fields which are abetting uh, patches of forest and we have handed back to the forest department 
so that uh, the workers uh, do not have to pluck leaf there and subject themselves to any kind of uh, proximity to these animals. So around 163 hectares was handed back in Valparai and 276 hectares was handed in Gudlur area. And okay, we are, so, we, are so is the there process, any... we are in the process of identifying some more areas so that at least there is a continuity. If you go to Gudlur area, you will notice the biggest problem is for the forest department when it is trying to move the elephants away from habitations, they have very little uh, place to move them to because you have pockets of uh, forests surrounded by a lot of encroachments and uh, habitations and other uh, the, uh, areas which are developed. So uh, the department also finds it very, very difficult to move. If there were a continuous corridor or a continuous track of land in which the elephants could freely move. And we need to have that continuity because from Vainad and Madhumalai, elephants regularly move down to uh, Nilambur area and they vice versa, they return back. So uh, those vials there were serving the source in which they would uh, consume water and forage in the slopes uh, near that. So this was the natural movement. But since there are large uh, tracks of encroachment, uh, we in Tanti, we are in uh, our areas, particularly in the Cherambadi, Cherangod uh, region, which is abetting uh, Vainad and uh, uh, Madhumalai. If we have uh, uh, given back some tracts of land so that at least a wider width of uh, uh, non-habited uh, non area, non-developed area is available for the elephants to freely move. So, is there any regulation for the for the private uh, estates to uh, to provide at least the, the passage for for the elephant corridor or, or passage uh, for other? At the moment, that, legally no. Uh, they are fully at liberty to use all the land which is at their disposal to uh, grow tea or other uh, commercial crops which they are growing. And the areas which they have not uh, developed, which are kept as woodlots, are to be maintained as woodlots. That comes with the regulation of Private Forest Act and uh, Hill Areas Preservation of Trees Act. So uh, with that regulation, those patches are retained. But nothing is mandated for them to maintain a strip of land for uh, animals to move around. There's, uh, legally, there is no such uh, binding uh, compulsion on them. What do you think of the population of uh, Nilgiri Tar in Mukurti? Uh, I think there is quite a healthy growth uh, from the uh -huh. recent uh, numbers. At least uh, another 30 or 40 uh, new recruits could be seen. So oh, anything great. above 480 uh, plus number. And uh, even uh, now that census has become a, a annual feature. So hopefully yeah. we'll get a, a population trend too. And But uh, the... Uh, Positive feature is uh, we get all age gradations, which is a very, very healthy sign. Uh, I have seen the management plan for Mukurti, wonderfully prepared. Uh, and I'm sure that you, know, you are continuing that uh, work of uh, weeds also, you know, because yes. uh, you have addressed the, the spread of weeds in that. Yes. That's also something very interesting. But what about the populations, you know, the, the scattered population of Nilgiri Tar, uh, other than Mukurti? Uh, other than Mukurti, we have pockets in South Division, uh, erstwhile mm -hmm. South Division. Now, North and South Divisions have merged into Nilgiri Division. So, okay. there is also a proposal to expand the Mukurti National Park uh, by taking over those areas. Oh, so that great. proposal has been submitted to government. It is pending with government. Oh, that's good. So, if that additional areas also are uh, included as part of the uh, Mukurti National Park, uh -huh. then a greater uh, width can be cleared and uh, there will be uh, better movement of these uh, animals. That will be good. Uh, sir, this Amjit, uh, would like to know like any upcoming programs, uh, uh, you know, to uh, to understand the population of Nilgiri Tars or any other, uh, um, you know, species over there, uh, so that uh, I mean, maybe we can also be a part of that survey or anything like that. Uh, there is an annual census which happens. Uh, though I'm a forest officer, but I'm of the frank opinion that if you leave a forested area to the animals, I, mean, I think they know how to take care of themselves better, as long as we don't interfere there. So that 78 square kilometers of area which is available in Mukurti National Park 
is fairly undisturbed except uh, we have stray movement of mouse coming uh, uh, traversing through that other than that uh, there's not much of uh, any biotic pressure in that area so the our populations are fairly stable we just need to do a little bit of habitat uh, improvement by removing the uh, invasives which are slowly spreading there are a variety of weeds which are gradually spreading across the grassland areas if that is removed the pocket sholas and grassland system is perfect there to ensure that uh, the thar numbers will uh, expand without any yeah, that, special effort needed so annually yeah, that's we just undertake census but there is some report uh, from uh, uh, wwf telling that some uh, uh, disease symptom is noticed of uh, some uh, uh, growth on certain of these animals so uh, we're just waiting for uh, this particular year census i briefly held uh, again the charge of field director mudumalai last month so i just heard of that so i'm no longer in charge of uh, mudumalai but i'm just telling that there is a, a continuous need for monitoring the animals there there's a continuous need for habitat improvement of restoring what the original conditions were there is nothing else that needs to be done there we just need to remove the weeds and uh, leave rest to the nature and uh, the thar will continue to multiply yeah that's excellent sir because some of the patches of the world like it, it can be like preserved as it is right without any research or any study or even any intervention no, uh, research and study is most welcome because yeah. we need to uh, no, know just... what is the population dynamics we need to know whether they are facing any kind of a threat of any other uh, uh, disease or any other uh, thing uh, monitoring is very very essential so there is definitely a role uh, if there is a census uh, we always uh, include volunteers into that so the outer bound method is used there and uh, it would be most useful to encourage uh, uh, willing uh, volunteers to be part of the census operation and uh, it would always enrich uh, the knowledge base of uh, that area okay so is that uh, the census has been uh, planned for this year or uh, it's been over uh it would normally be done uh, after the calving happens so it would be in april may just before the monsoon so that is the time when census is normally carried out okay okay, okay so I, yeah i i just Dr. meant sir like is the so. right person to answer that <laughs> <laughs> sir uh, there is a question about uh, what about the tiger population in the uh, the uh, tiger population uh, in the district uh, is fairly large if we just see uh, mudumalai gudlur nilgiri division mukurti all uh, uh, taken the number is coming close to 150 150 so which is uh, just matching if by uh, uh, you are aware of the uh, uh, monitoring mechanism that is put in place for uh, tiger uh, census so that normally tells that what type of this particular habitat can house how many tigers safely so it has already reached that saturation and uh, there is a small alarming aspect of the uh, tiger composition is we have slightly larger number of male than female so which which means that uh, since male has a larger uh, territorial need there would be a conflict and uh, some injured tiger would slowly be moving into non uh, uh, normal or the non occupied ranges which would normally be abetting human habitations so there is a possibility of a higher man animal conflict from tigers in the coming years because the male population is slightly higher than the female okay. so this is in mudumalai right so we have no, tigers talking, in... uh, total total i said mudumalai oh. has uh, 62 in the core and 65 in the buffer that is as per and, the and there are, there are tigers in the mukurti also tigers or, in mukurti around uh, nine individuals have been identified there okay, okay. and besides we also have in gudlur in gudlur as well as in other areas in in fact uh, uh, even uh, a few kilometers away from kunur also it has been noticed beyond kothigiri it has been noticed it has been sighted on the road so we have uh, even in the slope uh, towards sirimugai we have uh, tigers kothigiri slope towards sirimugai so uh, tiger numbers are uh, on the increase in some ways 
but a large number of uh, be, being a continuous part of uh, wooded and forested area a lot of these tigers tend to drift away into the neighboring protected areas or to the other areas so they use as a transient uh, phase which is actually good there's a good gene flow happening in the nilgiri biosphere reserve as all of you i'm sure are aware this is the area which has the largest population of the royal bengal tiger around 600 all the pa network and the uh, western ghat landscape has almost 600 tigers and it's almost continuous almost there is a small break uh, in the uh, anamalai portion a small break near badra but otherwise the remaining portion Vainad, Bandipur, Mudumalai, uh, BRT Hill, Satyamangalam, uh, Nagarole, all form a continuous patch of forest with very good populations of tigers. Tiger, dhol, wild dog, uh, this uh, gore, and elephants. This is the largest uh, congregation in the world. Sir, sir, uh, sir, again, sir. Uh, uh, regarding this uh, HAD, Yes, it, does it have any sustainable uh, contributions towards the solid waste management of the uh, entire uh, Nilgiri structure, sir? Uh, I, I, I happen to work as a PDHADP for five years there. So uh, there were a couple of initiatives which were taken because, uh, like I said, HADP would only undertake works uh, of uh, or would fund works which are coming as proposals. So solid waste proposals came only from a few habitations. There are certain difficulties in a hill area. Now the problem in the hill area is you cannot have large scale uh, collection of solid waste accumulating in any place. Because of the smell, people are not willing. In, in plains areas, you could move your uh, solid waste disposal or processing unit away from the township. But here you don't have that scope. It, they are all close to the habitations. So uh, now what is being proposed is uh, uh, decentralized uh, solid waste uh, management by which you don't uh, congregate all your solid waste into one area. You have a segregated collection and uh, processing and disposal in localized areas, small, small areas. So that is being tried out. And the collector, again, is very, very proactive uh, towards that. And the plastic ban is uh, rather vigorously being enforced. And uh, this, again, uh, this uh, corona period's ban has come as a boon that uh, we didn't have the pileup of plastic that normally happens during summer. So it didn't happen this year. Even otherwise, because of the segregated collection and uh, the ban on plastic right from the state government itself is very strict about it. There was almost, uh, from what I heard uh, from the municipal authorities, is almost a 40% dip in the plastic uh, accumulation in the solid waste. There's a dip in that. But there is still a long way to go for segregated collection. Normally, what happens, even if you have segregated bags, the collection mechanism presently is they dump it into the same uh, dipper. All the material goes into the same dipper. And they are, again, going into these places where the uh, units are there for uh, uh, segregation. And they're, again, engaging people to segregate. So now the attempt is to ensure that the entire material is segregated at source and goes in that same channel so that we have segregated accumulation of material which can then be disposed either uh, sh through shredders and the broken glass is, can be sold separately shredded plastic waste is shredded into pellets and which is used as green roads by mixing with bitumen and 10 percent of uh, uh, bitumen can be replaced by plastic and then uh, all the solid uh, waste which is decomposable is being decomposed and used in situ at the moment into the feeds. But there is still a long way to go in that. It is still in the nascent stage. Thank you, sir. I think there is an entry fee to Nilgiris, you know, which is being collected at the entrance. So where does it go and how do you manage that fund? Does it go to the uh, common treasury or is it being utilized uh, for a development program or for some regulation activities? The, uh, that is called as the green tax and that is uh, mm -hmm. levied by the district administration and the uh, collector and there is a, a committee which uh, monitors the utilization of that fund. 
so uh, it is being put to use for uh, one of the uses is for uh, solid waste uh, management uh, oh uh, then uh, maintenance of we had in uh, some of the meetings in Vainar and uh, high ranges in munar we had uh, suggested to follow the same pattern uh, to this local self government at least can because they say that no we don't have fund for such yes. things for this that so we said you know this could be but they don't have the guts to do it no but it's actually a very useful thing but it needs to be very carefully monitored because what had happened in shimla i'm sure you're aware of uh, shimla was the first yeah. place to introduce uh, green tax but they put that money to use for anything that is remotely concerned with uh, restoration of uh, the townships or ecology they put it to they paid for wages and uh, frittered away the money so that matter went to high court and high court uh, had to intervene and uh, give a stay on uh, collection of that green tax so state government oh. here is very very cautious so it has given clear cut directions of how that money is to be utilized so th that is a learning lesson but that money is extremely useful for the local bodies to undertake a lot of these activities Otherwise, they would be hard pressed to uh, generate that revenue to undertake these activities. I think it's a good model. Yeah, there is a statement from has yes. noticed worldwide COVID-19. Yeah, I think you read that. Okay. Yeah, but uh, uh, at least like I've seen some users from the north somewhere saying like during the COVID-19 times, like uh, some since the the movement of people or the forest officials are less, like some poaching has increased in some part of the world, maybe like Assam or some place. Is there any anything is real or it's just a speculation? Uh, See, uh, I'll just tell you what exactly happened around that time. You had uh, people who came from a lot of towns, cities, back to the villages, back to their hometowns. You put yourself in that position. You were under lockdown situation with uh, restricted uh, opportunities of any kind of an entertainment or moving out. So there was definitely a small spurt in the uh, wildlife poaching instances, not only here, all over, all over the country. There was a spurt. The reason was this. There's all these kids who were locked up in the house, their pent up uh, emotions, they would let go in this. And large number of people hunted not for eating or for the pleasure of it, just to post it in the social media. So a lot of cases uh, were detected, particularly in Madurai, Erode, Dharmapuri, Krishnagiri. In these places, the forest officers put up a team to monitor the, uh, uh, um, the posts in Twitter, uh, Instagram, where people uh, were posing with uh, all these uh, wild uh, trophies uh, just to impress their friends in other places. So a lot of cases were booked. That was definitely, it had happened. But the department uh, was not uh, active. That is totally wrong. Uh, though I am not in the forest department at the moment, I'm on deputation with uh, T Corporation. But I have been extensively traveling because we were working right from April 1st. We were working continuous. So I was then watching all the other uh, teams. They were, the patrolling was going on in Mudumalai entirely. All the areas, north, south, all these areas, Goodlur, the uh, anti deportation squads were active. So the patrolling activity went on. There wasn't any uh, uh, gap in that at all. And uh, another uh, redeeming feature was that we have not had uh, any COVID instances in any of these uh, forested areas. There was only one guard who got uh, COVID. She came from Madurai. She was the only case. Uh, Not a okay, single so, tribal got uh, then, COVID in uh, Masangudi area till Tepegado uh, 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 and beyond. Okay, sir. The, the news was not from uh, Tamil Nadu or Kerala. No, but a similar actually, thing happened. Uh, similar thing happened. Thought, I'm yeah. just telling you that okay, okay. what happened here, I'm sure the similar thing happened there. These okay. were people who were just okay. sitting in the villages with uh, no outlet of any sort. So they uh, 
they were tempted to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of poaching. So poaching instances definitely increased. Thank you. Is there any questions, comments? Alibai, you were asking something. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Nothing, nothing. That's a point. That's a point. Always. Uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, given us Sir, an insight into the lot of programs and uh, some of the regulations which can be followed in our hill, hill areas like Munar and uh, probably Wynard and the Kumli region pyramid. So I think, you know, this will be interesting. Say, this is especially as, as somebody commented that, you know, there, there is no mining activity. You know, that's surprising. Yeah. I think what is required is political will. <laughs> and right and good officers to suggest. Yeah. Right from 2012. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so if if no more questions like there, uh, there is uh, one more one more thing I just needed to just mention that there is also a high court ban on uh, use of JCB here. So uh, any it. bona fide need for JCB usage requires a collector to issue a proceeding on case by case need basis only. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. That's great. We we would have blocked the road and gone for a uh, strike. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. the political way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. I think, like, you know, before closing, if uh, possible, like, can you just brief about like the tourism activities in Mudumalai and I think like no activities in Mukurti kind of areas, right? So just uh, brief about that. Uh, so that would be helpful. Mukur for Mukurti, me. there is no tourism activity. It's a national park kept intact. What normally happens is in the fringe of Mukurti is Avalanche area. That is where the ecotourism uh, activity is being undertaken through the uh, Toda tribes who are living in that area in the months. So the EDCs have been organized. They are taken on a road trip right from um, Avalanche till a place called Lakadi and brought back. Now that road is totally washed off in uh, the last year's floods. So that road is damaged, so even that activity has now stopped. But in Mudumalai, uh, though uh, the, in state uh, for other botanical garden and other uh, horticultural places, the government has permitted to start. But in the PAs, uh, the permission has still not come. So Mudumalai is still officially closed to visitors. And there is still e-pass requirement for Nilgiri district. Nilgiris as well as Kodai Canal, you need to apply for e pass. The uh, tourism. Uh, so, being worked in. Uh, so, I am Dr. Rajiv again. So, being worked in Uti for so many years, uh, I have one doubt. Uh, or, uh, yes. Because uh, is the topography or the cold climate more uh, troublesome for the pe people uh, residing over there rather than the real actual problems? No, uh, this area has a very high uh, air quality index and uh, if uh, someone doesn't have a cold allergy, allergy to cold, then absolutely fine weather. Okay. My mother mm -hmm. is 73. We don't even use heater at home. Yeah. So even in peak winter, mm -hmm. she's able to manage. Uh, in fact, uh, it is reverse, uh, which happens that when I uh, cross Barliar and go down to Coimbatore, once I reach Metopalliam, I am I wait for the time to rush back to uh, Kunur. And if I'm transferred okay. to Chennai, <laughs> I dread to think what will be my fate there. <laughs> so uh, the uh, people oh. who have pollen allergy and uh, people who have allergy to cold, they may have a small issue. But otherwise, in general, mm. the air quality is extremely good. And uh, this mm. cold doesn't cause any problem. Okay.
एनी मोर क्वेश्चन yeah if uh, if no more questions i think like um, shamim you can for go ahead with that yeah. sir actually thank you sir uh, the, it was a wonderful session uh, in fact uh, you have uh, thrown light into a lot of aspects uh, which includes development of people and also uh, Shami, maybe right. net cut. Oh, okay. So, yeah, thank you very much for this session. So, for uh, giving us a lot of insight into all these uh, activities, basically, like we uh, we actually, you know, we know like we just have seen. Okay, DP, create a DP in the uh, in the boards, and uh, Nilgiri is actually like a wonderful place because if we go to any places, uh, any hills uh, uh, in Kerala, like we don't uh, have these many restrictions of like using plastics or uh, giving any tags or like uh, say and 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 uh, it's good to know that you know that like, there are more restrictions and then there are more preservation of wildlife and it's 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 great, sir. So yeah. And uh, thanks to Issa sir for making this session lively with uh, questions and uh, discussions. And uh, so we had a very good uh, session with a lot of discussions. Thank you. I think uh, we are fortunate to have such an experienced person who has been there for a longer period. I think nine years he said in in that area and with wider uh, exposure. Uh, I think you know we should be thankful to him. I am seeing a lot of appreciation. In the chat box, you know, uh, that's that itself is the, the reward for uh, having him here. Thank you, uh, uh, Reddy, and uh, hopefully pleasure, we may meet again. I think you know, last time we met was in the discussion on SADP in Chennai. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's always think, a you know, pleasure to uh, talk to all of you, and yep. great pleasure to uh, interact with uh, Isa sir and uh, Ali. Of course, is a very very close friend of mine. wonderful so, thank you thank you thank you very much thank you really wonderful session and really one more uh, thank you thank you very much and good night sir thank you good night thank you, you. Good night. bye 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 we'll see thank you sir